Welcome to Faith of Victory Church Wednesday night Bible study. So glad to have you with us tonight. Jesus is Lord. And God is good all the time. Hallelujah. We welcome you to be with us tonight. We thank you for joining us uh, as we continue on our teaching on confession, on our words, on our how our words shape our future and destiny. And um, so we're just so glad you could join us. We left off last week. Um, and <clears throat> from over in um, Mark's gospel, talking about um, speaking and applying your faith through your words. And so we talked about this. We, we shared the um, account of Jairus coming to Jesus to come and heal his daughter. And um, Jesus was on his way. And then in the middle of that, the woman with the issue of blood came. And, um, you know, remember, for she said and kept on saying, if I can touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And when she touched him, he touched his clothes. Um, Jesus turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And uh, the disciples said, Master, you see the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And uh, But the woman, fearing and trembling, and came down before him and told him all the truth. And uh, he said, woman, great is thy faith. Go and be whole of thy plague. <clears throat> and then... Um, People came from Jairus' house and said, Bob, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter's dead. And Jesus said, basically stopped from saying anything. He said, don't. He says, just believe. And they went and he raised her from the dead. And, uh, and that's kind of where we left off last week. <clears throat> so I wanted to kind of come back and segue back into that before we move on. There are four things that took place here. Um, and more specifically, we could see it with the woman with the issue of blood. Number one, she said it. Um, Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty two through 26, um, he said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith that the Greek article there can be the way it's structured. Can you can actually say, have the faith of God, um, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray. Now, we've talked about this before. The word pray in Greek is ateo, A-I-T-E-O. Same word translated over in James chapter 4, where it says you have not because you ask not. The word ask is. In the Greek is ateo, A-I-T-E-O. So prayer or asking, speaking, saying, okay? So whatsoever things you desire when you ask, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 8, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word, that is the word of faith, which we preach. So <clears throat> number one, the woman with the issue of blood, we can look at that story real well. She, um, when she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him, for she said, and like, as we said before, the, the, the tense of the verb there, um, is for she said and kept on saying it was a it was a continual ongoing thing it wasn't you know a one-time event you know <clears throat> she didn't just say one time well if I can touch his clothes I'll be held and that was it she said and kept on saying it she kept on saying it she she was governing her actions her life her her outcome with the words of her mouth hallelujah words of faith in her mouth glory to God um, secondly the Bible tells us, or, or, or the, the, the second point here of the woman issue of blood, she did it. In other words, she acted on her faith. You see, faith without works or actions. James, you know, a lot of people want to say that Paul and James were, uh, were in disagreement about works. And that's just simply because they look at the raw English word and don't look at context and, uh, you know, um, you know, Paul preaches a lot about, uh, you know, we, we're not justified, but we're justified by faith and not by works. 
He, and, and but you've got to read in context. You've got to study Paul's writings because when Paul refer, refers to works uh, versus faith, he is referring to the works of the law. In other words, by keeping the Tenth Commandment or by, you know, walk, not walking on a Sunday or by, in other words, adhering to the Levitical law, you would be saved. And Paul said, no, we're saved by faith, not by keeping the law. When James says, show me that faith without, uh, uh, without works, I'll show you my faith by my works, he's not talking about the Levitical law. He is making a reference to actions that correspond to his faith. So it may be the same English word works, but in the context and the, um, the doctrine, uh, a theological uh, exp expose, um, is that the right word, expose? Uh, no, well, um, theological ex de declaration, exegesis, the declaration. Um, I, I can't, I, that word sounded right to me until I started saying it. Now I'm not sure. All right. Oh, well. Their theological perspective. There you go. <clears throat> we'll just get off that other word. Um, when they, in, in, the, in the theological context of their, th of their doctrine, James is not referring at all to the works of the law. I'll show you my faith by doing the works of the law. He said, I'll show you my, because he talks about if a brother shows up and says, um, I'm hungry and naked and cold. And you say, be warm and be filled and be clothed and send them on their way and don't do anything to help them. Then you know, basically your faith is in vain. In other words, actions should correspond to your faith. Actions should be correspond to your faith. Faith should produce action. Here, the woman with the issue of blood, when she heard Jesus came in the press, she got up from that place, uh, that bed where she'd been, you know, bed, um, uh, bedridden and was staying there and had been suffering for 12 years. Many things and many physicians, nothing, nothing better, but rather grew worse, spent all that she had. But she heard of Jesus and she said, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. If I can touch him, I'll be whole. And then... According to the words she was speaking, she got up and acted on it. <clears throat> James 1.22 says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And he goes on and says this, deceiving your own selves. James 2.17 says, even so faith, if it hath not works, <clears throat> is dead being alone. And then verse 26 for as the body is dead, without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, and actually some translations have said this, without corresponding action is dead also. So you have to act on what you're speaking. Okay? Just, you know, being, pa faith is not passive, it's aggressive. Amen. If, you know, it's, 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 you got to understand that you have to, uh, be active with your faith. <clears throat> you have to act on your faith. Hallelujah. The third thing she did was she received it. Merely virtue went out of him and she knowing in herself, she was healed of that plague. We had to receive by faith what God's word promises us. Hallelujah. You know, a great quarterback can throw a football all day long to a certain spot on the field, but if the guy doesn't receive it, doesn't catch it, it doesn't do any good. Amen. You don't get any points for being in the end zone and the ball hitting you in the hands and then falling to the ground without you receiving it. It's called a drop pass, incomplete pass. Doesn't mean anything. And then you get booed out of the stadium, especially if it was the last play of the game and you're, you're, you were going to win the Super Bowl and all your fans were excited and all of a sudden now they're disappointed. Hallelujah, I think. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, subject to change, but... The things which are not seen are eternal. The word of God is eternal. And we have to receive the word of God by faith. 
actually act like we believe it's so. See, they got the actions involved. Saying it, doing it, receiving it. You got to act like it. Amen. You have to receive it into your heart as done, as completed. And because you've received it and you're acting on it, amen, even when you, if, and let me say this, your actions have to ha take place before you actually will see it. Manifest. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and then the fourth thing she did was she testified. She told it. Amen. She came down before him, fearing and trembling, and told him all the truth. Glory to God. Remember when the band um, <clears throat> um, had, the, had, had the demons, you know, the legion of demons, and Jesus told them, you know, cast them out, and he went all over the place telling everybody what Jesus did for him. And numerous places, Jesus said, go tell nobody, and they would run out and begin to publish it everywhere, what Jesus did for him. Hallelujah. Jairus' daughter, you know, uh, they, <clears throat> they went out and began to publish or tell or testify of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. We need, to, we need to testify of what the Lord's done when we receive by faith. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, just kind of what I, I was kind of, kind of backing into last week as we, um, you know, so say it, do it, receive it, and tell Jesus. Testify. Amen? Praise God. So that's what, that's what we get out of that uh, uh, account of the woman with the issue of blood. Let's move over now because I was, I was kind of tying it back into last week. The, huh? That was the intro. Yeah, that was that was the, that was tied back into last week and finishing that up. We're moving forward now. <laughs> I'm just warming up. Hallelujah! All right. The wonderful thing about making biblical confession, speaking what the Word of God says, Hallelujah, is this is not an exercise in mind over matter. This isn't. Um, Christian science of denying the truth and, you know, uh, believe, saying that the, the natural realm doesn't exist. This isn't, you know, the power of positive thinking. Because <clears throat> just thinking positive is not enough. And the beautiful thing about biblical confession, speaking the word is, is that Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Isn't that good news? Isn't it good to know that Jesus oversees our words? Amen? Amen. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Jesus is our high priest of our words. Praise God. And I'm um, going to look up something right quick. Okay, Hebrews 3.1, I, I had to look up something because I didn't put the uh, scripture reference in my notes. <laughs> Shame on me. Um, it says here in Hebrews 3.1, it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now, you understand the Greek word translated confession is the same word they translate profession. All right? So it's talking about he is watching over the words that we speak that are in line with his word. Now, he does, a, he does a high priest your negative confession. When you're not speaking the word, he's not working to make it come pass. Now, the devil might be, but Jesus isn't. All right? Actually, the devil is. He's looking for the opportunity. But <coughs> the word priest means one authorized to administer an agent, and an, an administer uh, to have charge of, a, of as a chief agent to execute or carry into effect, to manage, conduct, furnish, supply, dispense, distribute, direct, control, execute, superintend, to furnish help or to be of service. Jesus, hallelujah, is the executor of your confession. He is the... Um, manager of your confession. He is the director 
of your confession, the controller. As we make confessions of faith, we bring the high priest of our confession on the scene to overwatch and to make sure that the words of faith that are spoken, hallelujah, and declared are, are brought to pass. It is not your job to bring it to pass. I mean, you act on faith. You act in faith on what you speak, but you're not out making it come to pass. Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? Jesus is the high priest of our confession. He watches over our words. Hallelujah. God said, um, you know, God, God looks over his word. He wants to perform his word. He said, my words not, will not go out of my mouth void, but they shall accomplish the thing I sent them to do. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. Jesus is the high priest. Now, remember, we've said this. We, we've told along these lines in the past, but your words are seeds. Remember, Peter wrote and stated, he said, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word, the words of faith in our mouth are seeds. They are seeds of faith. Hallelujah. Can you say glory to God? They are seeds of faith. And Jesus is the high, this, 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 this. Jesus is the high priest of your seed, not of your need. Jesus is the high priest of your seed. He is not the high priest of your need. Because need is created through a lack in some realm or another. Spiritual need is lack in spiritual things. Financial need is lack of financial. Physical need is lack of physical help. Needs are not created by God. He's the need meter, but he meets the need with the seed. What seed? The seed of faith. The words spoken in faith. Jesus is high priest over your seeds, your faith word seeds that are spoken and declared. Hallelujah. Now, some of y'all should be running around your living room right now. Amen. Amen. He meets our needs with our words of faith. Listen to this, not with goods. <clears throat> he meets your needs <clears throat> with the words of faith, the seeds, not with the goods. The goods are the results of the seeds of faith meeting the need. They create the good. They create the result. So he watches over your word. He doesn't watch over your need. He watches over your word. The words of faith. And remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your words must of faith are birthed out of God's word. It causes Faith to come. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Can you say amen? Can I get a hand clap, shout hallelujah, glory be to God forever on the, okay. I got them going on out here. Get some pom-poms out. Hallelujah. The prophet did not say in 1 Kings Elijah, when, when, remember, the, he came to the woman and told her, he said um, in 1 Kings 17, 13, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me that, because remember she said, I'm going to make the last bit of bread I got and me and my son are going to eat it, then we're going to die. Well, I'll tell you what. You got to stay on, you can't be negative. You can't be full of unbelief. You can't be pessimistic. You can't be speaking doubt. You got to speak faith. Glory to God, you got to speak faith. And he says, okay, go make the bread, but bring it to me first. 
and then make for you and your son. And she took that word, acted on that word. You see, what met the woman's need, God sent the prophet to her, and he gave a word. And she acted on that word. And the Bible says that after she fed him, that the barrel of meal and the uh, vat or the cruise of oil did not waste for an entire year. It lasted for an entire year. I mean, this is not like a, you know, she was making really small bread. She was going to make the last batch and die. But because she acted on the word that meal and that oil stayed there for a year. It kept reproducing. She'd go every morning and there was some in there. She'd go back the next morning and there was more in there. She'd go back the next morning for a whole year. Hallelujah. They lived and until what? The famine was over. See, when you act on the word of God, God will sustain you even in famine. Praise God. It might be spiritual famine. It might be political famine. It might be, um, you know, mental famine. It might be, but if you will act on the word of God, God will sustain you. Hallelujah. But you've got to speak words of faith. The prophet didn't say, well, cook me a cake and then we can all die together. Yeah, woe is me. Eeyore. Now, there's a lot of Christians who have the Eeyore anointing. Walk around, it don't matter. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that great anyway. Sitting under the stick, getting rained on. It was a good house. Putting his tail on the wrong place on his backside, like pinning the tail on the donkey. He was a donkey. It was all right. I mean, all, everything was just, you know, it's, it's just, woe is me. Life is terrible. And, and listen, you got to be a tigger. <laughs> bouncy, bouncy, bouncy with faith. And faith, 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 faith. I mean, <clears throat> you got to be full of faith. Jesus is watching over your words. God looks over his word to perform his word. God's working in your behalf. He's always looking for faith. Now, I'll say this. People, people say, well, God did this for them. And God, God is not a respecter of, um, God is a respecter. Of, uh, he's not a respecter of persons. Let me say, let me get this right now. I want to say this. God doesn't bless one person because he, he likes them better than another. And he doesn't want to bless somebody else because he, God's a respecter of faith. What moves God to act is faith released in your words of which Jesus is the executor, the, the controller, the director over those words to see that they come to pass. I had somebody tell me one time, you know, God's a loving father. And when he looks at something and you're believing him for something and he thinks you don't need it, he won't give it to you. I'm sorry. If it's scriptural, if it's according to the word, if I'm asking in faith, <clears throat> let me say something. Now, if you're not walking in love, your faith won't work. That's the Bible principle. Faith works by love. Okay? You can, you can undermine your faith by walking out of love. That's not God withholding it from you. It's you're not walking in love. But if you meet the conditions of faith because you believe the word, you spoke the word, you're acting on the word, you've received the word, God doesn't choose not to do it. Well, he can do whatever he wants to do. Yeah. He bound himself to his own word. We've, we've quoted the scripture to you many times. <clears throat> For all the promises of God. Now, King James says um, that, the, that the promises of God or in him, yea, and in him, amen. The Weymouth translation says, for all the promises of God, whatever their number, whatever their number, 
<laughs> Isn't that great? All the promises of God, whatever their number, find the yes in him. And our amen acknowledges its truth to the glory of God in us. Hallelujah. All the promises of God find the yes in him. So King James, all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen. Which, this, you know, say the same thing, but the Weymouth, I just love the way the Weymouth says it. You know, all the promises of God, whatever their number. And we know there's over 30,000 promises in the Bible. Hallelujah. Find V.S. in him and our amen. What does it mean, our amen? Well, the word amen in Greek, it means in English from the, you know, the Greek, meaning so be it. Or I affirm this is true. Why? Because you believe it. See, amen is not a preacher response. We do we use it that way. Preacher says something, we all go amen. Now, there's some things you say. The preacher says sometimes you shouldn't say amen to. I mean, it's better to say help me, Jesus, on some of the things. You know, the devil's been at work on folk. Well, you don't want to say amen. You don't want it to be so be it. Hey, hallelujah. Are y'all here? You've gone home. First, uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20 is where I was quoting from. Um, in King James is, you know, all the promises of God in him are yea and him. Amen. Weymouth, all the promises of God, whatever their number. Find the yes in him. Now, I grew up in a church that said God answers prayer three ways. Sometimes yes. Sometimes no. And sometimes maybe. Well, you know. And I believed for a long time that was Bible. Because I've been told. Grandma said it. All the older church folk I heard. I mean, everybody I knew that was a Christian in that church said, God answers prayer three ways. Then I read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, and found out God answers prayer one way. Yes. Because you see, it's not biblical prayer if you're not doing it according to the word. Hello? If it's not according to the word, it's not biblical prayer. It might be whining. It might be complaining. It might be fussing. But it ain't prayer. In other words, you haven't come before God to receive from him at his banqueting table. Amen? Hallelujah. He sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <clears throat> so, we have to understand. That when we ask God according to his word, his answer is yes. Why? Because his word is his will. Now, if I look at you here today, and uh, I see they, those, some of you drifting through here on Facebook, and uh, I go, okay, guys, those watching tonight, I want to give you $100 a piece. Now, I'm, this is an example, not really doing it. I'm not going to give you $100. I'm telling you up front. But, yeah, the people here at the house going, uh, too bad. <laughs> really? Uh, praise the Lord. But if I said, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, my will to give each one of you $100, um, you know, come by the house, and I give you the address, and, you, and, and I'll give you the $100. And you show up. You get in your car, and you drive over here and get to the house, come knock on the door. Say, Pastor Ed, I'm here to get my $100. And I look at you and go, I changed my mind. Because I don't like you. Or, you know what? I really don't think you deserve it. Or, on second thought, I was just kidding. Didn't mean it. What am I if I tell you with an affirmation that I will do it, and then you do exactly what I said. Get in your car, drive over to my house, come knock on the door, I'll give it to you. And you do all those things, and when you come to my door and knock on it, I open up and go, I ain't doing it. I'm a liar. The preacher's a liar, that's right. I'm not sovereign. To, I can do whatever I want to do. I am, I, I'm sovereign over my money. I can do whatever I want to with it. But for me to take that 
and tell you that I will do this if you meet this condition and then not do it when you meet the condition is a lie. Now, I know in modern day society, we don't think lies are wrong. But in biblical terms, lying is wrong. And so God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent or change his mind. I am the Lord that change not. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So when we, when we go to God and his word says something is promised to us, or it's a covenant blessing, covenant right, by the very declaration of the covenant, for us to meet the condition of faith, and then God come back and go, eh, I changed my mind, I'm not doing it, is a lie. Well, what are you, God can't lie. That's exactly right. God cannot lie. And if God cannot lie, and God promised, and you met the condition of the promise, which the main condition is faith. Now, there's sometimes there's other conditions, but, uh, you know, like, you know, tithing and, 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 and you know, finances. Get, you know, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. He didn't say, I'm just going to give you money back. He said, give and it shall be given. <clears throat> so, the, you know, the act of faith, you know, and giving, but still you got to give. you got to tithe. And he, if you do that, he doesn't go, well, I ain't going to give you nothing. Oh, yeah, I know I said my word that if you call on my name, I'll, I'll, I'll save you. But you know what? I changed my mind. I'm not saving you. I'm going to send you to hell. Because you, because you and uh, uh, Cap don't get along with each other, I'm just going to send you to hell. But I met the condition of faith. Doesn't matter. I'm God. See, he, can, he doesn't do that. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. When you meet the condition of faith, the answer is yes. It is never no, and most certainly not ever maybe. God's not wishy-washy. Actually, actually, let me get. Let's go back over there, because um, there's a little bit more in that passage in Second Corinthians that I, re I really didn't get to. When, uh, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 1, 17. Wherefore, I say, when I was therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or those things that I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh? That with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. Now Paul's saying my answer should be yes or no. Just, you know, no. But, but as God is true, Listen to this. As God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. It wasn't back, either yes or no, back, back and forth. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by um, me and Sylvanus and Timothy, um, uh, Timotheus, Silas and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him yea. For all the promises of God are in, in, in him yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now, very interesting. Another translation here in, in verse 19 says, because God is not a waverer between yes and no. It is always yes with him. I, I believe that is, you know, in the way. Of, it is always yes with him. He's not a waverer between yes and no. God doesn't fluctuate. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. I'm going to tell you something. You go teaching people that God answers prayers three ways, yes, no, and maybe, and they go see something in the Bible that says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. <clears throat> 1 Peter 2.24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, 
we have more people trying to figure out how to keep people sick than we do teaching the Bible. Because you'll have preachers come along and go, and somebody will say, well, that, you know, Jesus healed me. Praise God. Oh, that means a spiritual sin, spiritual sickness of sin. Really? Well, if you go to Matthew 8, 16 and 17, it says that Jesus healed all the sick, cast out the devils, that it might be fulfilled, which Isaiah spoke. And that passage they refer to as Isaiah 53, um, 3, 4, and 5. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He healed physically, physically healed people. And the Bible says that him doing that was fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah. Hello. So don't kind of get Mickey Mouse cute and try to say that, you know, it's the spiritual sickness of sin. Sound, you sound so spiritual, but you're, so, you're full of hogwash. Hello? And that's plum nasty. All right? No, with God, the promises are yes. He doesn't waver between yes and no. But if I tell you he does, and then you go to the Bible and you see 1 Peter 2, 24, that by his stripes you were healed. And you got that sermon from some preacher in the back of your head. Well, God, sometimes with God is yes. You know, sometimes it's no. And all every once in a while it's just a maybe. How are you going to have faith to declare what God's word says? Hello? If you don't know, it's his will to do it. You cannot have faith to speak it. Remember? Say it. Do it. Receive it. Testify of it. You can't have faith to receive, to do, to say, do, or receive if you're not sure. Hello? Hello? What are you in if you only, if you don't have faith for something, but you want it to be true, you're in hope. But we are not saved through hope. We're saved by faith. For by faith are you saved, I mean, by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith. See, faith begins where the will of God is known. And that's why we always have to go to the word. That's why we say speak the word. Because the word has faith power in it. And Jesus is watching over that. If you say, Lord, save me, if it be your will. Well, I can tell you, first thing is, you just told me you hadn't read your Bible. Because the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. He's not willing that any should perish. So his will is everybody gets saved. So for you to go to him and go, save me if it's your will, tells me you don't know what the Bible says about it. Therefore, you don't have a, you don't have a basis of faith because you're just you're hoping something. That's why we have to preach salvation strong. God loves you. God sent Jesus to die for you. God raised him from the dead for your justification. And if you will confess him as Lord, he will save you. You'll be born again. No ifs, ands, or buts. Hello, no babies. No, not today's. It is you come in faith and he will receive you today. Today is the day of salvation, the scripture says. Hallelujah. But you know why they didn't receive it? Because the Bible says that they, the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith. The word spoken did not profit them not being mixed with faith. When we come to God, see, we have to have faith. And you can't have faith unless you know Jesus prayed one time, if it be thy will. 
You will not find another case, another record of him praying, if it be thy will. Then in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was about to go to the cross, and he said, Father, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, that's the if, thou, if it be thy will prayer. He prayed. He was consecrating and dedicating to the will of God. Now, you can pray that prayer. Um, maybe you just think possibly you're supposed to go to Africa as a missionary. Now, you don't have a scripture that says, uh, Ed Taylor, go to Africa as missionary. Then we have scriptures that say go into all the world. We're led by the Spirit. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Their ministry gifts are called uh, and sent forth. You know, uh, in Acts chapter 13, verse 1, as they, um, there was a group of people together, including Barnabas and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted and prayed, the Holy Ghost said, separating them to be Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they, had fa when they fasted and prayed, they had hands on them and sent them forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. See? <clears throat> there are times in consecrating to obeying God and doing what God said, we pray if it be your will or what, what's your will concerning this. But when we have a specific promise in the Bible, you don't have to pray if it be thy will. You never preach salvation. You never know. This just might be your day. Today's the day of salvation. I do know. I do know. If the Bible says today is the day of salvation, then I do know that today is the day of salvation. I don't have to be spiritual and say, you just never know. It might be your day. No. You can't put faith, because then somebody's going to come to the altar and pray, hoping it might be their day, but they have no basis for faith to believe it's their day. Y'all here, you going home, you turn your phones off yet? Y'all still out there. Hello? So if Jesus is going to be the high priest of our profession and watch over our profession and, and, and guard over it and watch over it, then we've got to be speaking words of faith. And words of faith are words that are out of the word of God. Or a specific that has come out of that word. With the Holy Ghost ministering to us. But I can tell you, if it's a written promise, the answer is yes. There's no wavering on it. Hallelujah. There's no questioning it. Unbelief is the only thing that would question God's word. And the devil. That's the trick of his forever. Go back to Genesis. When he came to the, came to the woman and, and you know, and uh, get, tried to get her to eat the fruit. And um, she said, um, he, he said, hath God said? He questioned the word. He knows that you shall not surely die. For the day that you eat of the fruit, you'll become... Your eyes will be open, you'll know both good and evil become in God's. He questioned the word of God. That questioning the word of God is not from God. It's from the devil. And it produces unbelief. And we got too many peach preachers standing in pulpits producing unbelief in their congregations and in the church who should be inspiring them and filling them with faith. Amen. We must take the word of God at face value. It means what it says. It says what it means. I know they're allegorical things. <coughs> All the trees of the field clap their hands and that kind of thing. But our first thing to the word of God is to take it literally. And then if it can't be taken literally, then you look for the symbolism in it. But something like, by his stripes you were healed is not symbolic. It's straight up. Jesus bore in his body your sickness and your disease, hallelujah, that, he might, that you might be healed. Just like he bore his sin, your sin, that you might be born again, made righteous. 
For he who knew no sin was made sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21. Hallelujah. So when we come to the word of God, we get the word of God in us. When we see, let's say that is go back to the woman with the issue of blood. When she heard of Jesus, when we read the word, she came to rest. She act, she was acting for she said. So you see, she began, see when she heard it, she began to speak it. And then she acted on it and she received it and began to testify. Glory to God. Glory to God. So our confession, as we said before, precedes profet, uh, possession. Jesus is the high priest of that. He's watching over it. And when it comes into him, when we speak that to him, but remember what God said in Isaiah 55. <clears throat> your thoughts are not my thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Amen? So are my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain cometh down and the snow thither and watereth the earth to make it to bring forth in bud, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, that it shall, uh, it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it, and, and um, oh gosh, and perform that which I sent it to do. I, I got a couple of verses mixed up there, okay? In other words, God said it will not return to me void. When I speak, how's it returned to God? It returns to him because Jesus is seated at his right hand, is the high priest of your profession, your confession. And when you take his word in faith and put it in your mouth and speak it, you're speaking it back to him. It's returning to him. And God said it will not return void. And Jesus is watching over that word to make sure it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And man, I wish I was in a church right now with a bunch of folk because we can have a shout and running time right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Can somebody say amen? There's no help me, Jesus is here. It's glory, hallelujah to God. Amen? So we have a high priest who's watching over it. Hallelujah. To make sure and the devil can come and say, you can't do that. For them. Oh, no, no, no. They're in faith. You, you have no say in this devil. <coughs> you have no authority in this devil. You have no power in this devil. You can accuse the brethren, but I am telling you, they're in faith. And I am of the high priest of their confession. And I'll make sure it comes to pass. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Did y'all get anything out of this? Hallelujah. I hope you did. Uh, let me see a hand clap or two if I did. Or you did. Amen. Hallelujah. There they go. There they come. I see Montreal out there. Hey, Montreal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, it's time for our Wednesday night offering. Uh, obviously, we're doing virtual offerings right now on Wednesday nights. So um, you can go ahead and see the information come up on your screen glory to god i hope that was on there before i drank my drink <laughs> maybe it wasn't okay well slow on the draw i was too quick on the draw that's a that's a little from Lidl's l-i-d-l one of their uh, lemon carbonated water drinks nothing but lemon juice or not even lemon juice lemon flavoring and carbonation essence limit essence in the carbonation praise the lord praise the lord um you can give through paypal or you can give through uh the cash app and uh, remember to continue supporting our building fund as we grow and we grow that we're walking out the plan of god but also to you know if you want to support the local church here uh we we'd appreciate it hallelujah jesus said to the uh, church give it it shall be given unto you good measure Pressed down, shaken together, running over, men will give it to your bosom. Hallelujah. Thank God that he said that. We can act on that and trust him. Trust him to take care of our finances. Trust him to bless it. Multiply back to us. 
Hallelujah. So we can establish his covenant in the earth. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name, bless the givers, bless the tithers, bless them abundantly in their household according to thy holy word. That the heavens of windows, windows of heaven be opened unto them, and you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we're so happy to have had you tonight. Uh, those that are watching, uh, we, we, we're just blessed to have you joining us. Um, it's always good to see my, my, my hometown friends joining us. And, um, and then, Montreal, I know you haven't been, you know, with, with all the COVID stuff, you, you haven't been able to come. But um, we're glad that you were able to join us tonight, too. Uh, and, of course, our regulars, we, we love you. We know you all always there. We, we, try, we, we thank God for you, too. Hallelujah. Listen, um, we'll be back here, here online on Sunday at 1230. If you can join us in person, um, uh, we're meeting at, at um, New Life Family Church on Sunday afternoons at 1230. Um, <clears throat> that's um, 6701 Ken Coy Road with a Jamestown address. Ken Coy Road, Jamestown. Um, map quest it, find out how to get there, come be with us. We'd love to see you. Um, but until then, remember these words from first John chapter five, verse four, and what serve is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. You're a world overcomer. Go walk by faith and not by sight in Jesus name. Amen. Love you. See you next time here. Faith and victory church online.